Pastors Andrew and Gabby Wilkes. The church is called the Double Love Experience Church. Today is the launch of their church. Like, we're a part of this, y'all. Are you listening? Those of you who are listening, we're a part of history. We envision, we envision. a Jesus movement committed to black lives. Hallelujah. Saints, it's Palm Sunday. If anybody's ready to shout Hosanna, won't you stand on your feet? Give God praise. This is one of those services where if you normally hold back, this ain't the service to hold back. This is the time in Scripture where everyone puts some respect on Jesus' name. This is the time where everyone decided to give God glory. Matter of fact, can somebody shout Hosanna? Come on, man, let's get a little groove going. Let's get a little groove going. Come on. Let's do a DLE style. Come on. Everybody with a palm, just wave them with me. Wave them with me. Wave them with me. Come on, I'm on high energy. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. You can play a little bit more. How about this? How about this? Clap right here. Now clap like it's the actual holiday for us. Come on and clap right here. Come on, we're going to charge this place a little bit more. Y'all too regular for me. No keys, just chase. While you're clapping, wave those paws. Now we bought these paws. Put them paws in your head and wave them like it's just okay. Drop a poem emoticon at home. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, right, right, right? Praise team is coming. But I want y'all to know what they say about DLE in the streets. They say that we are a church of millennials and Gen Zers. They say that we are a church with high energy. They say that we are a church with good praise and worship and good word. So if we are those things, which I believe we are, it should feel like a concert in here today. I don't know why y'all so low energy, but I'm going to tell you something. Even the folks who didn't really rock with Jesus on Palm Sunday had some. 
some different energy, all right? So we gonna clap, we gonna set this thing off right before the praise team comes. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Act like you know, come on. Be good, be good. Okay. If y'all need a low energy Palm Sunday, that's all right too. We'll smooth it out if we need to. But I know one thing. On Palm Sunday, we give the Lord what's due Him. On Palm Sunday, we act differently. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. How about this, Hosanna? Blessed is the one who knew they were going to kill him on Friday, but came on Sunday anyway. Hosanna, blessed is the one who left heaven and came down to earth to show us the way. Hosanna, blessed is the one who knew that we would on him and lie on him and came anyway. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who took all the sins of the world. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who came anyhow. So here's the thing, the praise team, they got all these Hosanna songs. Pastor Andrew got a real good sermon. But you really shouldn't need any of that if you're a Christian. This week, on Holy Week, we should have to do a thing for you to lift your hands up and to celebrate a God. Your life is what it is because he came. Your life is what it is because he came. On Holy Week, Okay, so here's what we said last week. We said we don't mind educating y'all this week. We don't mind putting on some classes and instructing you to let you know why Holy Week matters. So guess what? Raise your hand if you heard that Jesus died for you. Just raise your hands. Raise your hands real high if you ever heard that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Praise team, have you heard about it? Mooney, have you heard about it? Andrew, you heard about it? Simone, Phoenix, Stephanie. Malik, CJ, raise your hands if you heard about it. Okay, so if somebody told you I'm going to kill you in five days, would you still show up to work? Because Palm Sunday is the day where he said they going to kill me. They going to take advantage of me. They not going to love me how they should. They going to show some fake love, but I'm coming anyway. So when we say Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. Of the Lord, just think about somebody who stuck their neck out for you when they knew you betrayed them. Just think about somebody who rolled down the street knowing a drive-by shooting was coming. Just think about somebody who was 33 years old, who came through 30 and two generations, and shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the one who called. That's what today is. That's what today is. That's what today is. So Holy Spirit, come and do what you can do. And we'll give your name all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Make some noise as the praise team comes. We keeping this energy up high all day.
little faster for me. Hey, hey. Clap those hands right here. Clap those hands right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Song says, Oh, magnify the Lord. Yeah. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, for he is worthy to be praised. It's real simple, help me say it now. Oh, hey, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. For he yeah. Is worthy to be praised. Oh, see, oh, magnify. Oh, yeah. Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. For he yeah. is worthy to be praised. Say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the right. Blessed be the right. Yeah, yeah. Blessed be the right. Of my salvation.
cornerstone, 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 that the builders rejected, cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, 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 blessed be the rock of the cornerstone, Lord, the cornerstone, cornerstone. Now everybody say, blessed be the rock. Everybody say it now. Blessed be the rock. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Say blessed be the rock. Blessed be, blessed be say. Blessed be the rock. Yeah. Blessed be the rock. Yeah. Blessed be the rock. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. He's my solid foundation.
wave your hand if you want to bless the rock. Hallelujah. Bless it be the rock. 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 Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for victory. Thank you for protection. Thank you for protection. Thank you for the blood. 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 Where would I be had it not been for the power of his blood? Where would I be? Where would we be? Hey, yeah. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Every. Come on, right in your house, pray. One, two, three, here we go. Blessed be the rock. to carry on further in worship in this same spirit of enthusiasm with this same exuberance won't you help us as we recite our mission and our vision together as a church y'all repeat after me our mission our mission is to create is to create a congregation a congregation committed to committed to the liberating the liberating love power love power ministry of Jesus the Christ ministry of Jesus the Christ we commit we commit to advancing the love and justice of God to advancing the love and justice of God through dynamic worship through dynamic worship popular education popular education community organizing community organizing and radical discipleship and radical discipleship let's say our vision together will be we envision we envision a Jesus movement. A Jesus movement. Committed to black lives. Committed to black lives. An equitable economy. An equitable economy. For all God's creation. For all God's creation. And a spirit-led mysticism. And a spirit-led mysticism. Which is the conviction that in our God, y'all, we live 
we move, we breathe, and have our very being. Let's pick back up together. That prioritizes. That prioritizes. Personal and public health. Personal and public health. The prophet Micah's enduring words. The prophet Micah's enduring words. Function as our centering image. Function as our centering image. We are a radical assembly of believers. We are a radical assembly of believers. Striving to do justice. Striving to do justice. Love mercy. Love mercy. And walk humbly with our God. And walk humbly with our God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take and your seats. amen. 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 Please, Pastor Andrew. Uh, pass me the phone for the announcements. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a confession to make. I feel convicted today. And the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, yes? Yeah. All right. So I feel convicted today. I feel convicted because we have made it too easy for y'all to come up in here by yourselves. And I feel convicted today because when I see the praise team pour out the way they just did, can we thank God for our praise team? When I see sweat falling from their faces. Yeah. I'm convicted. Because y'all, as Double Love, we've gotten too comfortable. You might say, how can a church plan get comfortable? We've gotten too comfortable with when we don't see each other, not texting folks and saying, hey, how are you? I know we normally lighten here, but you're normally part of the light number. Where you been, bro, sis? Are you well? Did you catch COVID? Are you busy? Are you just not making the trek to 334 South Fish Street anymore? Y'all, I'm convicted because being a good steward also means being a good steward over telling the good news of what the Lord is doing. So I'm going to confess to y'all publicly because public accountability is a good thing. I want everybody walking in here in double numbers from this day forward. Now I know we can't predict people saying yes, I know we can't, but I want everybody, us included, to make sure you're inviting at least one person to physical or virtual church every week, okay? This is an act of accountability on Palm Sunday when everybody flooded the streets because they heard Jesus was coming through. People got what they needed because folks spread the word that Jesus was making his way through Jerusalem. Y'all, I'm convinced that as Double Love, we've forgotten to spread the news. I'm convinced. I got on the comments myself today. We're not there. We're slowly trickling back in here, but we're not here as we should be. I'm going to be honest, I don't have a preference whether you come physically or virtually because we're navigating this strange dimension of the pandemic, so I would never make someone feel badly if they're not physically here. But I'm convicted because we've forgotten to look for people virtually. We've forgotten to look for people physically. So in this holy week, this holy time, of recognizing the importance of sharing the good news. I am convicted. We can't go forth with that kind of power with the music and that kind of power with the word, and nobody knows we're here. All y'all are popular folks. Y'all got friends on friends on friends. It's one person every week you can at least say at 5 o'clock, come with me or tune in. It's got to go beyond sharing the stream. I share the stream every week. It's different than texting somebody and saying, hey, I want to share my church with you. Okay? I'm convicted. Because I've gotten away from it. I don't like people feeling like I'm nagging them. So I don't like to ask people for too much. But y'all, we can't be hashtag still growing without doing our part to spread the good news. Because just as you all in here have testimonies of how Double Love has blessed you, there are people who also should be blessed by this experience. Yeah. And we are the conduits. 
It's about 20 of us in here right now. That means we can grow to 40 next week if just each of us just say to one person, I want you to worship with me. Here's the other reason why I'm convicted. When we were having our preview year, uh, people would come at 5 o'clock. They would say 5 o'clock is the perfect time. And guess who said that the most? People who serve in other places. How many of you know folks who serve all day every Sunday, but because they're serving, they don't get to sit and receive? Put your hands up if you know folks like that. Put your hands up high. Come on. Cameras can't see you. Put your hands up high. Do it again so I can see who's in here. You know people who serve and work and slave all day. And they don't receive. So, so as a result, they ain't really been to church. They just worked at church. They worked at church. They went to work today. But they didn't go to church yet. Those folks are the first folks you should invite. Okay? We ain't trying to steal nobody's members. It's not about that. It's about the work that the Lord is doing and the people who are assigned to the work. Raise your hand if you know creatives, people who are out there uh, gigging and doing their thing in fashion and music and the arts, who love God, who believe in God, who pray to God asking for their breakthrough, but who haven't yet tapped into a church yet. Raise your hand if you know folks like that. Raise them high. Y'all nervous. I'm not going to ask you to say their name right now. I just... I just want to make sure what the Spirit is giving me is accurate. Uh-huh. Okay. Pastor Drew and I, HBCU alumni, every HBCU, I bet at least 50% of us go to church, if not more, okay? Raise your hand if you know some HBCU folks, some HBCU graduates. They live in New York. They don't have a church yet. Invite them. What am I doing? I'm giving you categories for when you scroll through your phone of how you can be doubly accounted for every week. Every week. Don't do this on Easter and then stop. Every week, every week, I want you to come up here. Pastor Gabby, my double is so-and-so. They in the comments. Pastor Gabby, my double is, is so-and-so. They, they, they at work, but they got their headphones, and they promised me they were going to be listening because, you know, they're allowed to do that where they work. We don't really have a preference how it happens. If they stroll through here, we're going to love on them and show some love like we do, DLE style. But I want everyone, us included, us included, Somebody uh, DM'd me when I was posting today, and he was like, I should pass through here. And I was like, yeah, you should. Normally, I'd be like, that's all right, bro. I know you're busy. God bless you. Now, this time, I was like, yeah, you should. Okay. We're going to be still growing. We're in year three. We got to do something different. Is that coming through? Yeah. Amen. Okay. Well, y'all don't seem excited about it, but I hope somebody is. Okay, that might have been fake, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Amen. 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 Y'all don't, y'all, that's all right. Yeah, if, it's, if it's not there yet, I hope it gets there. I hope at some point we get to a point where we're so excited about what God is doing. We don't want to hoard it for ourselves. We want to make sure everybody has what they need. Amen. I just got some uh, quick announcements, and then um, Pastor Drew, please lift the offering. Amen. Um, next week, we have an Easter tea. And uh, we decided to add a karaoke piece to this. So if you want to just come and just, you know, have some fun with the church, come have a good time. We're going to literally just plug in YouTube. It ain't going to be that serious. We're going to plug in YouTube and uh, let y'all go forth, read the, read the lyrics, and have a good time with that. 2 o'clock p.m. next week. Uh, we made an announcement for volunteers last week. We didn't get any, so I will be in here early setting up. And if you want to help me, just pull up. I'll be here. I'll be here at 12 o'clock next week setting up for the tea. Uh, Bible study this Tuesday. Uh, we will not have a Good Friday service this year. We've decided to suspend that. And so in, we will not have a Good Friday, but we will have Bible study. So meet up on Zoom if you'd like to be a part of that. Amen. And then, of course, we have worship at 5 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, we're going to come up in here in our DLE vest, our Sunday vest. Amen. So, you know, whether that's church Sunday for you, whether that's polo classic best, whatever you look like when you get intentional about how you come up in here. Uh, I'm going to try to find a fascinator hat or something, you know, trying to, trying to have my Sunday vest energy on in here. So y'all come up in here looking good next week.
we're going to have a good time. We'll start at 2 o'clock and with the tea and the karaoke, and then we'll have church at 5. Amen. And then lastly, uh, Brian Lindsay, who is our book club coordinator, uh, will be regathering the book club on Friday, uh, April 22nd which is uh, the Friday after next. So we got Good Friday this week, and then the next week is the book club. They are voting uh, between a few books. The focus is going to be economic um, empowerment for this book. And so um, the book will be announced on Easter Sunday, but y'all mark your calendars April 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, for that book club. And I believe if enough people say they want it, Brian is willing to try to gather folks physically again. All right? So that should be a good time. Amen. Amen. Pastor Andrew is going to lift the offering. Then the praise team will come. And then Pastor Andrew is going to bring the word. I had a little bit of a, I didn't hear the whole sermon, but I, I was peeking in his preparation. Y'all should share the stream. It's going to be a good word. Amen. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. If you have your palms, won't you just wave your palms one time? If you're worshiping with us, won't you just drop a leaf or branch, whatever emoticons they give you. It ought to be a good thing to be in church for Palm Sunday. Amen. The joy of the Lord is still our strength. Uh, well, it's giving time, church, and there's three ways that you can participate in this moment in worship. Uh, you can give first using Cash App. Uh, the cash tag is D-L-E Give. Uh, your second option to give is to give via PayPal at paypal.me slash D-L-E Give. And your third option is to give using our email address via Zelle. Uh, the email address is doubleloveexperience at gmail.com. We'd encourage you to give uh, deeply and thoughtfully as you are able. Uh, and as you're preparing your gift to entrust back to God a portion of what God has already entrusted unto you, let us prepare our hearts through a word of prayer. And after that, the choir will come the praise and worship team, which sings with the energy of a thousand choirs. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, will come to lead us further in worship. Good and gracious God, we thank you for being the author of every good and perfect gift. God, we know that we do not self-generate our blessings, but you are the great benefactor who makes it possible, who makes it possible for whatever good we enjoy, whatever gifts we steward. God, you are ultimately the cause of it. Doesn't mean that we didn't have something to do with it in terms of our effort. Doesn't mean we didn't work with others to have what is coming to our hands. But God, we know that credit ultimately belongs to you. So God, this is our opportunity. This is our worship occasion to give back to you, God, a portion of which you so generously entrusted unto us through tithes, through offerings. And God, our collective petition that you would use these resources to advance your salvation work in the earth. Use these resources, God, to forward your liberation, to forward your love and your justice. In the name of Christ Jesus, who is our Lord, we pray in his name we give. Let every heart say amen and amen. The praise and worship team comes now to lead us in worship. Why don't you put your hands together and encourage them as they come. Praise God. Be not entangled.
go up again. Oh, Lord, we lift you high. We want you to be
lift Jesus higher than anything you're worried about. I dare you to lift the name of Jesus higher than any of your concerns, any of your perspectives, anything you hold dear to your heart. Just lay your way down for his. Just lay your way down for his. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Higher. One more time. Jesus, you'll be lifted higher, higher, higher. 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 Higher in how we esteem you, God. Higher in taking your name seriously. Higher in our worship, higher in how we walk. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher, God, in the words that flow from our mouth. Higher, God, in our advocacy, in our organizing. Higher in our art, in how we manage, in how we lead. Higher in how we show up as family members, how we show up as friends. Higher, Lord. Let your name be a banner that we lift high. Lift high the name of Jesus proclaim. Let angels prostrate fall. Hallelujah. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Hallelujah, God. Come on, lift up your voice. We're going to get to the sermon, but Jesus, higher. Higher, be lifted. Last time, Jesus, you be lifted higher. One last time. Higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for our mentors, but above that. We thank God for our parents, but above that. We thank God for those who struggle and sacrifice for us. We certainly do, but above even that. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't let it out any other Sunday, Paul Sunday, hallelujah. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher in our thoughts. Higher in our praise. Higher in our integrity. Higher in our ethics. Higher. Higher in our conscience. Higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. 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 Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. Last time, can't let it go. Jesus, you be lifted higher. is all about Jesus you be lifted higher Hallelujah, turn with me to Matthew chapter 21, 
verses 1 through 11. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. I don't know about y'all, but, but Holy Week, if you sit with it long enough, ought to be a continual shout. Holy Week means God thought in the words of uh, Brother Anthony Brown in group therapy that you were worth saving. Don't miss the self-esteem basis of Holy Week. Holy Week means you are worth the trouble. Holy Week means you are worth the effort. Holy Week means God considered the cost and considered you and said, I'll get on a donkey and go into Jerusalem. Holy Week means you deserve to be free. You deserve to be healed. You deserve to be whole. You deserve to see your life unburdened, untouched by trauma. You deserve black woman. You deserve black man. You deserve black children. You deserve black auntie. You deserve black uncle to live free and free indeed. Why else would we carry on like this? Why else would we shout like this? Why else would we be deep in our feelings? Because Jesus is worthy. And because Jesus who is worthy thought you were worthy, that ought to be a shout. That ought to be sufficient stimulus to be happy all the day long. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving. You knew what the cost was and said I'll go down and pay it anyhow. The text says, the text says, we just gonna have to read this text in the spirit of worship. The text says, when they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you. You can shout while we read the scripture. It's always appropriate to shout while we read scripture. Now I'm just gonna keep on reading the passage and immediately, the text says, you will find a donkey tied, if you can bring it down just a little bit, and a coal with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. Your king, your king, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a coat, the foil of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd has fled their cloaks on the road, and others cut their branches. Do you see it in the text? Others cut their branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Hallelujah. Let's look to God in prayer. God, we thank you. God, we pour out our hearts. We pour out our gratitude to you, God, because you merit all of this carrying on, God. God, somebody watching this stream may not be familiar with this kind of exuberant praise. God, all we're simply trying to say is that you are the one who preserves our life and does us even better. You give us life more abundantly, God. We thank you, Lord. We honor you with our lips and by how we lead our very lives. We honor you, Lord. 
We honor you by ourselves, but there's something sweeter. There's something deeper when we can honor you corporately. There's something sweeter and something deeper when we can assemble to announce collectively that we trust you. We respect how you lead our lives. We respect how you secure and execute the plan of salvation. God, we honor you. We ascribe glory and honor and majesty to your name. Be with us, God, in this time of looking into your word that we might find the hope we need, that we might find the help we need. And God, as Pastor Gabby encouraged us to do in finding hope and help for ourselves, God, give us a generous mind to be able to share that with others, God, to share the time of praise and worship, to share our testimony, to share the stream, to invite somebody to come worship with us. God, church is not a solitary project, but church is a solidarity project, God. We got to do this thing together. Be with us now as our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can take your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a sweet, sweet spirit of worship in this place. You know, I, I, I got half of mine to just keep lifting up songs of Zion. You know, it, it's always a good thing to, to praise and worship God. And just seeing us uh, with abandon, seeing us without filters, worshiping God. Not only the words that are coming from our mouth, but to see arms outstretched, to see us moving about and jumping and dancing and the cadence of our bodies blessing the Lord. That, that's occasion for, for shouting and rejoicing. Put your hands together and give a great God a great praise. Hallelujah. I'm doing my best to, to carry on. Won't you help me announce uh, the title for our time today? Somebody shout, Overcoming Fake Love with Vocational Focus. The, the, the title that you're seeing on the stream may just say fake love, and I promise we'll get there a minute. But, but say it with me one more time. Overcoming fake love with vocational focus. Amen. In the summer of 2016, fake love had both the pop charts and black radio in a chokehold. And perhaps it was because Brother Aubrey Drake Graham released another chart-topping album. Uh, but more than likely, it was the subject matter and not just the artist that made the song stick. All of us know what it is to experience, quote, fake people showing fake love straight up to our face, the songwriter said. Am, am I talking to anybody? Has anybody ever experienced counterfeit affection? Has anybody ever experienced fraudulent empathy? Has anybody ever experienced group chat, go on bro, grow on sis, but when you get out the group chat, they not really celebrating your wins like that. The songwriter gives us language. The songwriter gives us symbols for what it is to taste the bitter cup of fake love. Has anybody ever experienced somebody who declares, and Proverbs puts it this way, it says, many a person promises to be faithful, but a faithful friend who can find? Fake love is not only a song that Brother Graham gave us, but fake love is a fitting description of the indignity, of the indecency that Jesus endures on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, in our Christian tradition, refers to the episode that's captured in this passage. Palm Sunday represents the start of Holy Week. It, it represents the start of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, and Palm Sunday also represents Jesus' experience of fake love. And the crowd's love is not necessarily fake because it's incorrect. Stay with me, church. The crowds understandably want Jesus to deliver them from Roman oppression. It's always a good and holy thing to want to be free. Amen? It's always an appropriate, godly, consecrated, sanctified, the Lord backs it and endorses it kind of desire to want to be free. So the, the crowds expecting uh, a military general is an understandable and in many respects commendable expectation that they have of Jesus. Are you with me? So the crowd's love is not fake because they want to be free. That's a good thing. But the crowd's love is fake because their love is misaligned with the vocational focus of Jesus' journey. 
The crowd's love is, is a little fake. It's a little counterfeit because it's under-informed by what Jesus uh, came to do. It's, it's under-informed, in, in other words, by the particular ways that Jesus comes to bring liberation and the particular pathway that Jesus used to help us get free from all manner of social evil and free from all manner of social sin. Here's the conflict. The crowds want Jesus to be uh, uh, coming in not on a donkey, but they want Jesus to come in on a war horse. The crowds want Jesus to, to come through uh, ready to throw hands against the imperial bully that we call Rome. Am I talking plainly enough? And when Jesus decides not to come on a war horse, not to come uh, as a Roman procurator or, ple or prelate, but when Jesus decides instead to come on an unassuming, to come, oh, y'all not reading the text with me, on a rickety little donkey, the crowds, they feel away. Have you ever felt a way when the expectation that you have of Jesus doesn't quite fit how Jesus is deciding to carry out business? Are you with me this evening? The crowds want Jesus to be a war hero, but instead, Jesus' own calling requires something different. Jesus decides to be faithful to carrying out a spirit-led movement of justice, of love, and of prayer. And on that basis on a nonviolent basis, on a, uh, on a coalition and community building basis that doesn't uh, 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 live by the sword and die by the sword, that, that doesn't live by the drone strike and die by the uh, drone strike. On that basis, Jesus decides to confront the Roman Empire. This Palm Sunday, I have some questions, family, that need answering. Because the vocational focus of Jesus ought to uh, encourage and inspire us to get clear about our own vocational focus. And my question for you this evening is, are you clear about your vocational focus from God? What is your highest, most clear read on what God is calling you to do? A lot of times we get stuck when it comes to vocational focus, not because we need to have another epiphany from God, but because that piece of revelation that we do have, sometimes it's difficult to put it into practice. A lot of times we get stuck and we stumble not because we need another touch from God, not because we need another flash of revelation, but the portion of God's truth that we understand, sometimes we have difficulty following through with that. And Jesus gives us an example of what it means to have enough resolution enough determination, enough spirit-led undergirding of our intention to know what lies inside of Jerusalem and to keep on going anyway. Jesus is our spirit-led example of what it means to have vocational focus. And if we are worshiping together, looking at this same text, I want you to know that the same vocational focus that is in Jesus is the same vocational focus that rests on the inside of you. God can give you the vocational focus to do what it takes to finish this round of school. God can give you the vocational focus to do what it takes to be a, a generous partner in your family. God can give you what it takes, the vocational focus to mend what is bruised. God can give you the vocational focus to regard things that once seemed impossible and to know that all things are indeed possible in God. Jesus models and exemplifies what it means to have vocational focus. I want this to be a personal message. Let's just take a few moments of silence and contemplation within the sermon. Get in your mind. Get fixed in your mind. One thing, just one thing that God is calling you to do. You might want to pull out the notes app in your phone. You might want to uh, pull out a loose leaf sheet of paper if you're worshiping at home. Take just a few moments to get clear on a single thing that God is calling you to do. Take, just take a few moments. We, we're going to hasten on with, with the sermon, but, but, but sometimes uh, the greater sermon is in the Holy Spirit whispering what we already know we need to do in our hearts. Get that specific thing in your mind. Because the way I think we need to read this passage is to understand that a part of the challenge of vocational focus, 
Do you have the thing in your mind? Do you have the thing in your mind? A part of the challenge of vocational focus is when God has told us uh, that we need to carry out our mission in a certain way. And then when the crowds come and they lay palms at our respective feet and it speaks to uh, uh, your ego needs or it speaks to their desires and their demands, but it may not necessarily resonate with the intuition and with the spirit's whisperings on the inside of your heart. A part of the difficulty of sustaining vocational focus is when you get into Jerusalem and the thing that God calls you to do is being affirmed by the crowd, but they're encouraging you to do the right thing in the wrong way. The crowd is encouraging Jesus to do what is correct, but they want it done in an improper fashion. The, the crowd is encouraging Jesus to do the work of liberation, but they want it done with armed fighting, whereas Jesus comes in with unarmed love and nonviolent power. The crowds represent the folks in our lives who mean well, who may even pray well on your behalf. But they're not praying necessarily in a way that is fully informed by the vocational focus that God is calling you to do. This Palm Sunday, I want us to focus on the humanity of Jesus, who decides to be concentrated enough, who decides to be set apart enough to the task of salvation and preserving that image of God on the inside of us so that we can ultimately be conformed to the image of God that is in Jesus Christ. Jesus is focused enough to carry out the plan that God calls Jesus to do in the way that God wants for it to be done. This is the challenge for each of us. There's a poet who puts it this way. Uh, I'm not necessarily in the habit of quoting poets who uh, don't have the melanin deposit that we do, not because I don't like their poetry, I do, but, but, but you know, we try to center uh, the works and the artistry of black folks. But I'll make an exception today if I have your permission. Do I have your permission? T.S. Eliot said, the greatest uh, deed is the, uh, the, the, the greatest deed is uh, the final act of treason, to do the right thing for the wrong reason. And, and a part of what Elliot is trying to get us to appreciate is that if we are doing the work God entrusts to our hands, but we don't do it in the right way, it can lead to a world of trouble. What about Moses striking the rock when it didn't need to be struck? What about Gideon needing multiple times for the fleece to be shown in order to trust God? If we do the right thing, uh, but we don't do it in the spirit that God is calling us to do, it can knock us off of our vocational focus. And the challenge uh, is not to let uh, the fake love of the crowds knock us off target and take us off kill. So there's just a couple of things I want to lay out about uh, how we can overcome fake love with vocational focus, uh, and then I'll take my seat. Is that all right? The first way that we can uh, overcome fake love is by actively accepting the full scope of our calling, including the inconvenient stuff. Are y'all with me? Vocational focus requires uh, not uh, fatalism, not resignation. Uh, vo vocational focus is not um, saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a cross that awaits me in Jerusalem, and I I'm just going to kind of go along with the script that's written for me because, you know, it's, it's just in the cards for me. This, this is just the way uh, the wheel of fortune has turned. That, that, that's not vocational focus. Vo vocational focus is both Jesus recognizing that there, there's a, a path that has to be followed, and there's the agency that has Jesus say, I am laying down my life. Vocational focus is voluntarily and consciously accepting the call that God has laid on our lives and giving a complete and comprehensive yes. Let, let me see if I can explain it through Scripture. Matthew chapter 20, verse 19, the chapter right before chapter 21, Jesus talks about the mocking and the flogging and the crucifixion that awaits him in Jerusalem, but he still decides to go into the city anyhow. And let me, let me make sure I'm being clear about this point. Our vocational focus uh, uh, is not to do the work of Jesus. We are not called to die on a cross. 
We are not called to work of needless suffering, but our vocational focus nevertheless calls us uh, to give a informed, comprehensive yes about what our calling entails. Let, let me see if I can explain it through a few examples, if, if I have your permission and consent. Pastoring, for example, not only includes preaching, uh, but Pastor Gavin and I will, will, will bear witness that it includes counseling. It includes pastoral care. It includes confronting social and structural evils legislatively and through other means. Pastoring includes a comprehensive yes, not only preaching, but there's a bunch of other work that goes on along with it. Uh, artists not only have to sing, but if you want to uh, do the vocation of an artist, you have to practice your scales, right? You, you have to engage in the work of, of writing lyrics. You have to blend voices, and uh, you may even have to blend personalities, which may be perhaps uh, an artistry all of its own. If you want to do the work of artistry, it's not only the glamorous and public-facing stuff, but there's a discipline and there's an infrastructure that undergirds it. Vocational focus requires a comprehensive of yes. Being a Christian, uh, to pick another example, is not just about what we do together in Sunday worship, but being a Christian takes a comprehensive yes of vocational focus so that we are comfortable being the ones uh, who get a little uncomfortable to explain the scripture to our family. That we are the ones who say, yes, I'll raise my hand and I'll pray at the dinner table when everybody keeps their head down and it's time to bless the food. I don't hear nobody talking. Being a Christian means a comprehensive yes of vocational focus. Not only accepting the things that are uh, filled with applause, not only accepting the likes, the shares, and the retweets, but the stuff that is unsavory, it means coming to terms with that as well. I don't hear y'all uh, engaging with me, so I, I don't have an indication of whether we're on the right track. So I need to call somebody to join us in this sermonic moment. Surely, 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 on your TV screen and on my TV screen, we have seen a ebony example of vocational focus and none other than Justice Katanji Onika uh, Brown Jackson. We got to call a full government name because she's serving in the government, right? If ever a time it's fitting to do that, it's when you have a, a circuit, court, circuit court judge who's now a Supreme Court justice. Uh, so Justice Brown, right, uh, Justice Brown Jackson, she knew when she became a circuit court judge that she would be attacked and they would scandalize her name. Am I telling the truth? She knew further that the scrutiny she experienced as a circuit court judge would intensify to a boiling blue flame if she gave a comprehensive yes to being the first black woman to be a Supreme Court justice. We thank God for Sandra Day O'Connor in 1980. We thank God for Justice Sotomayor uh, during the Obama administration. But it's a different hill of beans altogether for a black woman to arise and do the work that God is calling her to do. Justice Brown Jackson knew that if she were to give a complete comprehensive yes, that she would have to endure before all America, before a world stage, the mediocrity of senators who don't know the Constitution from the Articles of Confederation interrogating her about stuff they don't even halfway know. And yet she gave a yes anyhow because she was focused, she is focused on discharging her judicial duties with excellence, with equity. And Justice Brown Jackson stands uh, as an example of what it means to say a yes uh, that is not simply uh, 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 content uh, with the palms and with the applause that she may have received as a circuit court judge. I can imagine uh, some folks said to her, uh, you ought to feel uh, uh, grateful. You ought to be glad about being a circuit court judge. And, and, and it's true that there is perhaps a measure of gladness in being a circuit court judge and serving on the federal bench. But her vocation was higher than the palms that were laid at her feet. Her vocation was to serve at a different and deeper level than the poems that were laid at her feet. If you listen to the adoration of crowds, sometimes it can cause you to shortchange the ambition that God has for you. Justice Brown Jackson knew that the scope and the scale of her impact could be larger than what some of her Harvard Law classmates may have been clapping for her to do. And so she gave a yes to serving at a level for which there's no clear reference point. 
She knew that Judge Constant Baker Motley was her heroine, but Justice Motley didn't serve on the Supreme Court. And so she gave a comprehensive yes, even when there was uncertainty surrounding the yes, because she trusts uh, that, as she said in her own words, that she had come this far by faith. And the question to us is, will we not only admire appropriately uh, Justice Brown Jackson, but do we have the internal courage and belief in the selves that is authored by God to look at the palms that are being laid at our feet, to listen to the hosannas, and to know that God is calling us to give a yes that goes beyond what the crowd can see? God is calling us to give a yes that goes beyond the legitimate, the understandable, but the under-informed cries of the crowd. Justice Brown Jackson gives us a real-time example of what it means to give God a comprehensive and complete yes. The first way that we can have vocational focus is to make sure that uh, with respect to the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, that we are not letting uh, the adulation, the adoration, um, the fawning, and the pleading of the crowd take us away from our vocational focus. That's the first one, giving God a complete yes. But the second way that we can give God our vocational focus and thereby overcome fake love. Are y'all with me this evening? The second way that we can do it is to, uh, do y'all mind if I say this in a, in a little bit of Atlanta vernacular? Is that all right? I know I'm in New York, so I don't know uh, if everything in Atlanta carries over to New York. Uh, but the, the second way that you have to uh, exercise vocational focus is to separate the real from the fake. You have to separate what is authentic from what is counterfeit. And we see it happening in our passage. The crowds, the crowds, they not only say Hosanna, they not only uh, say blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, they not only... Uh, have these expectations that they uh, impose upon Jesus, but, but we have to give the crowd some credit. Because in verse 11, the crowds correctly recognize Jesus as a prophet from Nazareth. Uh, and so often, uh, we, we harangue the crowds and we drag them by the collar and don't give them a chance to holler. So often on Palm Sunday, preachers flog the crowds. Have you ever heard it before? But, but the crowds deserve some credit because while Jesus is more than a prophet, Jesus is also no less than a prophet. Are you with me? And a part of what vocational focus entails is that we have to separate the fish from the bones. We got to learn how to appreciate the meat and spit out uh, what is counterfeit, spit out what is fake and what is fraudulent. Folks that uh, show you fake love, in other words, may be wrong about nine out of ten things, but nine counts of being wrong doesn't invalidate one flash of wisdom. Folks that speak ill over your life may be incorrect about a range of things, but it may be that uh, they got one epiphany. And if, if a broken clock can be right one time a day, or is it twice a day? Yo, bless the Lord. If a broken clock, hey, 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 there's wisdom in the church. There's wisdom in the Lord's house. If a broken clock can be right twice a day, then surely uh, God can use a crowd to speak what is correct and what is appropriate. Sometimes, uh, uh, in order to uh, have the kind of clarity and the sort of precision of vision, we have to learn how to bring uh, a discriminating eye to what we see the crowds and hear the crowds saying. There's a reason why uh, the correspondence in 1 John chapter 4 tells us to test the spirits. There's a reason why we're called not to be blown to and fro by every wind and doctrine in Ephesians chapter 4. We're called to have minds that are alert in analyzing and listening to what the crowd say. Sometimes your critics and your detractors may have a little nugget of understanding that is essential to your vocational focus. It may be that some saints want you to start a, a GoFundMe page for their vision. Uh, and that may not be the vision that God has called for you to do, uh, but they may correctly see 
uh, that God has gifted you to be a fundraiser or gifted you to be a validator. Uh, sometimes the saints may want you to write a book on uh, what is their favorite subject. Uh, it may not necessarily be your favorite subject, but uh, the crowds and those who urge you to do something that they feel passionate about, even if that's not necessarily your passion, they may nevertheless see clearly uh, that you have some gifts of expression and that you have some gifts of artistry and literature. It may be that some folk are uh, 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 projecting can I talk plainly? Projecting what it is they're asking God to do for them onto you. And while most of it may not necessarily fit, if there's a portion and a part of it that fits, we do well to listen closely and to listen carefully. Jesus, I can imagine, is riding on the donkey into Jerusalem and is encouraged by the words of the crowd that recognize that Jesus has been exercising a prophetic office. I can imagine that Jesus is encouraged just a few verses uh, past verse 11 where it says even the children know uh, that Jesus is a prophet from Nazareth. They may uh, be uh, off target. They may be off base with respect to the entirety of Jesus' vocation, but we can have vocational focus when we pay attention uh, to the little portion and the little tidbit that folks are calling us to exhibit. Vocational focus is strengthened when we can listen to the words of our critics and our detractors and understand what it is they're saying that is correct. Let me see if I can uh, bring Brother Drake back into the conversation. There may be those who said, uh, that Brother Graham should be content uh, with his TV stint uh, in Degrassi. They, they may have encouraged him to, uh, to keep getting a good check, bless the Lord, because it's always a praise to have a check in your hands, yes. It's always a praise to have a salary that is steadfast and movable and helps you to abound in the work of the Lord. There may be some who lay proverbial palms at Brother Graham's feet and told him, you know, you got a good thing going you ought to just stay at Degrassi. Uh, but there may have been those who knew uh, that he had a desire to be in public, to be in front of cameras, uh, but not to do it uh, as uh, Brother Graham doing whatever role he did on the Degrassi show. It may be known better to you than it is to me. We bless the Lord for it. Uh, but he was able, uh, so we can reason, to infer that uh, he had a role in public, not being an actor, but instead pivoting from TV to music, moving from uh, uh, lines that he would be given by screenwriters and instead writing his own lines and ultimately joining uh, Young Money and being the artist that we know as Drake. Imagine if a Justice Brown Jackson would have stayed at the circuit cut George, judge level. Imagine if Brother Drake would have just stayed acting on Degrassi and didn't uh, come to give us uh, some of um, uh, hip-hop music. I don't want to split the congregation today. Uh, some of uh, the songs that the saints play on Spotify, So Far, So Gone, and More Life, and so on and so forth. Imagine if uh, those who we regard and revere would have stayed content, stayed complacent at their current levels of service and didn't make the pivot by listening to those who may have been some things, uh, but were correct in certain ways that they viewed uh, their lives. In this passage, the crowds don't get everything right, but it is the part of wisdom. It is the purpose of divine insight to be able to isolate and spot out the things that are correct so that we can overcome the fake love of the crowds and move forward with vocational purpose. Before I take my seat, uh, I want to just lift up this question because uh, you may be wondering, how do we overcome uh, the fake love of the crowds with vocational focus and to do it in a way that is consistent, to do it in a way that is reliable, to do it in a way that is dependable. Has anybody ever wondered, uh, what do you do when your faith starts to buckle? Yeah. Has anybody ever wondered, what do you do when your faith uh, feels like prayers are going up against the ceiling and are not coming down with what you need God to do? What we see in this passage, what we see in the entire Gospel of Matthew is that Jesus ultimately uh, is able to embody vocational focus from the human side because it's guaranteed by vocational faithfulness from God's side. Jesus understands that God at the end of the day will direct our paths. Jesus understands that God will be a light unto our feet. 
Jesus understands that God will be a lamp unto our path. Yes, it is hard to overcome the fake love of the crowds. Yes, it is hard to give God a comprehensive yes. Yes, it is hard to spot out what the crowd say that is right and to discard the things that are incorrect. But Jesus understands that our insecurities are not God's insecurities. Our doubts are not God's doubts. God believes in your calling, even if you don't believe in your calling. One of my favorite epistles says that God is faithful to us when we are faithless because God is faithful and cannot deny God's own character. God is a faithful God. And the God that we serve, I said the God that we serve is a finisher. When you get off focus, God remains on target. It's not our vocational focus, but it's God's focus that keeps us on track. We can walk into Jerusalem with faith that moves mountains. We can walk into Jerusalem knowing that God has our back, that God is our rear guard, that God is our vanguard. The reason we have vocational focus is because there is a God who watches over Israel. And the God who watches over you, neither silvers nor sleeps. The God who watches over Israel will be your shade at your right hand. And nothing shall strike you by day. And the moon shall not strike you by night. The God that serves us is a God who is Alpha as well as Omega. Because the Bible still says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible still says that Jesus is the pioneer and Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. Be not weary in well-doing, for God will bring it to pass in due season. Keep your focus. Keep your determination. Keep your target. Because God is watching over you. And if God's eye is on the sparrow, in that what we used to sing in Sunday school, if God's eye is on the sparrow, then I know, then I know that God watches over me. God has God's eye on me. I hear a songwriter say, I hear a songwriter say, keep hope alive.
chapter 1 that Jesus is the faithful witness. Jesus is the faithful witness. What does that mean? It means that we ultimately put our faith in Christ because the faith of Jesus Christ was so steadfast, was so rock solid that we can trust that Jesus finished the work of salvation. It's going to be some ugly and messy stuff this Holy Week. Yeah. But we put our faith in Jesus because the faith of Jesus is steadfast. And as long as Jesus is trustworthy, I promise you God will pull you up when you're down. Yeah. God will pick you up and turn you around. God, the elders used to say, will plant your feet on solid ground. The call to keep your vocational focus is ultimately a call to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the one that starts us off in this salvation work. And Jesus is the one who consummates or completes this salvation work. This Palm Sunday season, this Holy Week time, this ought to be a moment where your praise of God and your confidence in God goes to another level. What I love about each of the gospel stories is that they show us a Jesus whose humanity and divinity interact with one another in a way that we can be. We're going to see Jesus pray some prayers that uh, are, are so relatable are so uh, like the kind of anguish prayer life we have that it is a reminder to us that if Jesus went through the trials and was faithful on our behalf, all we have to do is tap into the same God who by the power of the Holy Spirit helps us to appropriate, to incorporate, to embody the flesh and faith of Jesus in our own lives. We keep our vocational focus, in other words by staying focused and concentrated on the Christ. There may be somebody here who is wondering, how do I get this vocational focus? I'm not even sure what God is calling me to do. I'm not sure what my vocation is. I, 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 I'm not sure if God is, uh, has something for somebody like me to do. We want you to know that God does have something for you to do and that God has a plan and a purpose over your life. Jesus is for you. Jesus and the church is for you. If you can respond to the number at your screen, 917-426-1830. You can type 917-426-1830. Uh, you can type um, S for salvation. Uh, I may not be saying the number right, but I believe it's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, S for salvation. Uh, you can type P for prayer. You can type Q if you have questions. You can type J to join. It is our prayer that on this holy week, that you go into this week with a sense of focus on God, trusting that you can overcome the fake love of those who mean well, but those who love is underinformed by giving God a complete yes. That's the first way to keep your vocational focus. Give God a total yes. The second way that you can keep your vocational focus is when you're talking uh, to folks who may not necessarily uh, know the full scope and scale of your call. I, I, I'm a witness that um, even when you're in conversation with folk and they uh, may be like 85, 90% wrong, there, there's almost always a little percentage. There's almost always a little ratio that you can give God praise for. Focus on that thing. In our text, that's verse 11. The crowds, they correctly see that Jesus is a prophet. And God always has a way in the language of scripture of, of, of bearing witness to God's own self. We've got to grab on to whatever witness we have and let it keep our focus together so that our vision doesn't get blurred. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Pastor Gavin is coming now to give us the benediction. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Put your hands together Hallelujah. and give God praise. That's what we want. Come on, Sunday, you can do a little bit better than that. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. I ask the praise team, let's go out real high.
because uh, it's Palm Sunday. So, um, y'all like Kirk Franklin? Yeah. So next week we're doing karaoke. Where are my Kirk Franklin fans at? Who's coming up in here doing some Kirk Franklin? Okay, okay, we're going to have a good time. Um, all right, so, come on, come on, man, come on.